All right, everybody, welcome to this edition of Behind the Visual podcast where I interview all those people responsible for the images and videos you see out in your world every single day. I am your host, lifestyle and advertising photographer, Mark Hansen. And today, my guest is Robbie Gendrono. And Robbie is the owner of Gendrono Design. He is a great guy, fun to talk to. He moved here from Indonesia to go to college. So he moved over here not knowing the language, and we talk about what he had to go through to learn English to a proficiency that he could actually start and go to school at the art center in Pasadena. So that took a little bit of work. He's always been good at design, so he thought he would come here and go to design school. Um, So yeah, we talk about that. We talk about... Um, how he has three different incomes. He's not just the designer. So he also owns a hair salon and a property, a real estate kind of property company. Uh, We talk about how he applied for a job and went to an interview at this company called Gen X and was told by the guy hiring him that you're not very good. And then the guy hired him anyway for two weeks and it turned into nine different years. Uh, Nine, not nine different years. It turned into nine years. So, um, yeah, we talk about everything in between. We talk about him moving from LA to upstate New York and what it took to make all that happen. Talk about how he decided he was just going to start doing everything differently than he had been just to kind of see what happens. And so far, it seems it's turned out really good. So listen to this one. It's a fun one. It's a good one. I think you guys are going to enjoy it and uh, enjoy it. This is good, right? This is, yeah, this is good. And this is good that, you know, taking a little break and, you know, yeah, this is fun because I'm assuming it's going to be fun, right? No, it's be very boring. And um, yeah. it'll probably end in like two minutes. I'll probably, I'll probably go, how'd you get started? And they're like, oh, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun, man. Yeah, we're just going to chat. First of all, tell me how to pronounce your last name so I don't screw that part up. Oh, uh, the D is silent, so you said it, Gendrono. Okay, I thought that was the way, but I did not want yeah. to screw that up. And yeah, you know, the it D is pronounced. It is. It is an old spelling. Uh, it's actually an old spelling from an Indonesian uh, word. Uh, Indo- sorry, Indonesian name. Is your family Indonesian? Yeah, um, I actually. They're all back home. You know, I came here for college. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and then uh, I was meant to go back when, when you know, when I, when I got my degree, you know, I was supposed to go back. I ended up, you know, loving LA so much, you know, and I said, you know, I'm just going to stay here, you know, but, but yeah. Well, that's good. So, um, yeah, and um, yeah, it's been, it's been a, you know, interesting life here, you know. <laughs> how long have you been here? So when you, how uh, long you I came here since college, so it was it, we're talking about twenty five years. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Do you go home a lot? Uh, I try to go home uh, once uh, once a year, but because of COVID, I haven't been back for like two years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is at the time that I said, you know, maybe I just wait. Um, maybe this time I can wait every once every two years, but I ended up. You know, because of COVID, now it's going to be a third year. You know, um, so yeah, I hope I hope this whole thing is over. But um, but great things happen, you know, during this COVID. So I can't complain. You know, yeah, I was surprised, <laughs> man, that you like started your own thing during COVID. I was like, that's pretty ballsy. That's great. Oh, I think it was. Uh, it, it wasn't by choice. You know, uh, I think uh, things. One thing happened, and then I have to do something to make it work you know what i mean so um because um yeah a lot happening last year um so that's why i decided to uh i came here to visit a friend and then i ended up you know liking it Uh, i'm I'm in upstate new york a a small city called utica oh yeah Um, yeah so i was here just uh to visit uh, and then I, and then I realized that oh you know I, I can do so much in this place you know so I ended up uh, buying a house 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here since July and I own a house and I own a big house. That's good. Yeah. A lot of work. The house. It is a lot of work, but, uh, <gasps> but I'm very exciting. It's a turn of the century, uh, Italian date. Uh, sorry, someone just texted me. Let me just, All right. okay, it's work related stuff. Um, I should just turn this off. So it's not going to bother me. Okay. Um, you got like a little arch thing happening over here. What's that? It sounds like you got a little arch kind of going on with the doorway over there behind you. Oh, an arch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah back this is, doorway. yeah. This yeah. is not my house, by the way. It's, uh, um, this is the, the, the place that I'm staying right now. Okay. So uh, the house needs a lot of uh, work. It's not too much, but it's, it's a lot of work. So I have to... Um, My turn. Yeah. So how long before you get into your house? Um, I, I'm going to shoot for Christmas, before Christmas or before Thanksgiving. You know, I okay. try to move in there. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so were you work, were you already grabbing work before you decided to move all the way across country from LA to New York and start your own thing or you just uh, have a feeling that you're going to be able to pull some cool clients? No, the thing is I have a client from the Bay Area. I got a client in the Bay Area. It's an uh, auto tech startup company uh, in Sunnyvale. Okay. And, and because of COVID, you know, uh, they are open about, you know, I don't have to be there. Right. <laughs> I can just be anywhere. So I decided, oh, maybe I should just stay here for, for now, you know. And then uh, I think we are in, in New York State where Mo Mohawk Valley, I believe it's Oneida County. Uh, we have a very low rate of uh, um, COVID around here. Yeah. So I think, I think this is a great place to be. Um, so, so I was able to uh, do my work from here and then they're, they're cool with it. And then I hire everyone in LA to work for me, you know? So, so we all, you know, work remotely. Oh, that's great. No one goes to the office anyway, you know? Yeah. So I guess that's the best thing about COVID is everybody's learned that you can work remotely and get it all done. Yeah. You don't actually have to be in the office together if you don't want to be. Exactly. And, um, yeah, and then, uh, each, you know, I've never been to, um, you know, when I think of New York, <laughs> I know this is coming from LA, you know, uh, a little ignorant of my, me, a lot of people actually, not just me, you know, when they think of New York, they think of New York City. Yeah. And so, so you know, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to New York State, I was thinking about going to New York City. And then it turned out, you know, my friend lives up north. And he said, oh, you should come visit me and then I can show you what we have here, uh, upstate New York, uh, upstate New York. So, and so, so I, you know, I came here and then he showed me around, you know, we went to a farm, we went to all these different uh, small cities like the um, uh, Sharon Springs, Saratoga Springs, Cooperstown, um, uh, what's the other, uh, uh, Syracuse, oh, wow. Albany, and, uh, you know, like just exploring all this whole upstate. And then it's funny, you know, I live in the States for the last 25 years. I had never heard about this part of the country. Oh yeah. And, uh, and then I feel like, wow, you know, um, I feel like I live in a whole new world, you know, and then I, I'm not sure about winter though, because I, uh, you know, I grew up on, on a tropical island and then I moved straight to LA and then yeah. now I'm in upstate New York and everyone already warned me about how cold it is going. Have you be. been in New York state during the winter at all yet? I have, I, I had last year, but okay. only for a week. Yeah. So I didn't really experience, you know, being the local person. Right. right. Uh, so, so let's see, you know, um, Man, I have no, now I have a house so I can, I have no That's choice, right? right? I just yeah. have to live, live with it. <laughs> yeah, you're stuck now. You're going to have to make it through it now. I have no, no desire to be in upstate New York during the winter. I've been in the city a few times, yeah. but that was bad enough for me. So I don't have any real desire to be upstate. But I've heard upstate. I've never been there, but I've heard upstate New York is very pretty. Yes, it is, especially right now during the fall. Yeah, I've heard. It's yeah, amazing. it's amazing. You know, uh, I, I look at, you know, all the tree change. It, it's just 
it's amazing. You know, I remember like a month ago, well, I've been working a lot at home. So the last time I went out, it was all green. And then I went out like last week and everything was, you know, yellow, green, uh, you know, all these different colors. So, so th I thought that was like almost like surreal, you know, yeah. <laughs> seeing all these colors. Have you seen, um, have you been up there in the fall? Had you seen the leaves change and all that before? Or is this no, the first time? this is the first time. Yeah. 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 It's so, a pretty cool um, experience. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's great, man. Well, con you know, congratulations on the move all the way across the country and the house and all that stuff. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So uh, how we met, um, you moved from LA, right? We, I think we met once in yeah, LA we met, at my office. Yep. In LA. Meredith, MXM. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was actually, um, just out there for meetings. So I, I live in North Carolina, but I shoot, like I've, I'm going to be in LA this weekend shooting some stuff. I shoot some in New York. Basically I shoot in all these places as local because I have play, friends to stay with. So I just stay with the friends. You know, if I'm in New York or I'm in LA or I'm in Miami, I just stay with friends and have crews there. So, but yeah, I was up there just for meetings and that's where we met uh, mm -hmm. that time I was up there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I like that's LA. You know, and my brother lived out there for a while. He is, his company, he's an architect and his company had moved him out to LA to work with mm -hmm. um, Lucky because he was redesigning all the Lucky mm -hmm. stores. And I think they're headquartered in LA. So mm -hmm. he was out there working. So I would go out there and hang out with him some when he was mm -hmm. out there. So I like it. You know, it's, I like the warm. Yeah, for sure. That was, um, that's definitely, I will consider that my second home. Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm ready for an adventures right now. So I think um, this is why I'm here. You know, uh, I want to do everything differently. Um, uh, I think, yeah. I think you definitely have, are on the right path considering you move all the way across country, you buy a house, yeah. you start a new business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're definitely getting uh, a little bit different from what you had been doing. So oh, yeah. you're on the right path for that. For sure. What'd you, yeah. So when, when you came over here, where did you go to school and what did you major in? Okay, so um, I can start, you know, from, uh, I can start, you know, my life from back home. You know, yeah. I think um, I started it, uh, I, I studied a graphic design and art center, but before I got in, in there, you know, I was, I, I was in Indonesia in high school and uh, I, I did not know what I wanted to do in my what my life, you know, as any young person. And uh, but I know one one thing that, you know, back home we used to have this. Um, it's called a memory book. It's a memory book. Uh, it's like a notebook. Notebook. You give it to your friend, and then um, and then your friend will write their name, their phone number, their address and then their picture, and then also a uh, word of wisdoms or, or anything you wanna say to the, whoever gave you that notebook. Uh, so that's very common. It's a very common thing. It's called, we call it the memory book. Uh, so for, for them to, to have it. So when oh, they graduated, great. they have that uh, memory book. And then I remember I, I always get very exciting about doing that. And, um, and, and, and I would like, instead of writing my name, I actually do a calligraphy, you know, I, I will do calligraphy and I design the whole page. Oh, wow. And then, and, um, and, and then I, and I ended up being known for that. I, I ended up being this guy who do letterings and uh, even my math teacher called me, oh, that letter guy, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, and then it became like people who are too lazy, but they want to write something nice will give their, their, their notebook to me and say, hey, can you write this stuff for me? Oh yeah. Or this person uh, notebook. And then I, I enjoyed so much that I, I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it for free. So, so I will just write down all these things. And then, and then I became the go-to person for, for stuff like that. Um, so that's the high school. And then, and then once high school is done, um, my dad, uh, I didn't, I still did not know, you know, what graphic design was. Uh, and my dad asked me about, um, so uh, what school do you want to go to, you know? And, and he said, as a father, um, 
I have the responsibility to support you. And I've been working on hard all my life. He said, and so you can get the best education and it's What's my responsibility. Um, my dad, um, uh, he's a businessman. Uh, he grew up, he actually grew up very poor. My parents grew up very poor back home in Indonesia. And, um, they, he used to sell t-shirt on the street uh, illegally, right? Because you don't really own the, the street. Right, yeah. <laughs> you just sell, sell t-shirt on the street. And, uh, and then he just moved up from there, you know, and then he ended up owning his own store and then he ended up owning um, a car dealership. Oh, wow. And then he owns a, 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 like a Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi car dealership. Um, okay. So he, he moved up, you know, but fortunately, you know, when, when the time for me to go to college, he... He was already there, you know, he already pretty, pretty well off, you know, right. so he was able to tell me about, you know, I can support you, you can go to any, any school you want. Uh, what well, little he did he know that I have good taste for um, nicer things. And yeah. then when, I, when you say good education, it pop ups, the first thing pops up in my head, United States, oh, I have to go to America, you know, and then, um, and I have to go to really good school there, you know. Um, and then he said, okay, if that's what you want, you know, uh, you know, you should go to, to, to America, to the United States. And at that time, I did not speak English. So when I first came here, I had to study English. So I had to go to, uh, I went to uh, UC Irvine uh, as a, English as a second language school. Okay, yeah. For like about eight months. Wow. I was there about eight, nine months, uh, sorry, three semesters. So it's about nine months uh, before, uh, before I was able to enroll to any college, you know? So um, it, was, it was a lot of fun, you know, in the second language, you know, you, you're hanging out with a lot of people from other part of the world and then you're all there. And then, um, and then at that time, that's the time when I have to decide, you know, oh, I have to, uh, go to school, uh, I have to pick up, you know, what, what major I should pick. And then when I, when I asked my friend, basically everyone told me, oh, you should be a graphic designer. Oh yeah. Every, everyone basically tell me, you know, I should be a graphic designer. And then, and then this one guy told me, you should go to art center. That's like a really good school in Pasadena. And then, and then I look it up, uh, you know, one of those, um, book that says best college in the U S whatever. Right. Uh, I think uh, the top three at that time, the top three art school at that time, Juilliard was number one, Rhode Island was number two, Rhode Island School of Design, and Art Center was number three. And, and, and then I remember, well, Art Center is right here, you know, so that's, yeah. that has to be the school I have to go to. Well, what made you choose you know, California? Coming, oh, because I have, a, I have a relative who lived in, in Irvine. Okay. So that's why I went to UC Irvine for right. English as a second language school. Okay. And um, so, and then I went to uh, check out the school, Art Center, and that was probably the most beautiful school that I ever seen. You know, you are on top of the hill yeah. in the uh, suburb uh, residential area. And then suddenly you're, you know, you're, you're going through a residential and then all the way at the top. And it's just this black box, like a simple black box. And then overlooking the entire Pasadena. Oh, wow. And then, and I was like, wow, you know, this school is, is beautiful. And then it's one of the top school. Coming from Indonesia, you know, we're, we're very brand conscious. Um, that's why when I think of, of the U.S., you know, U.S. has really good branding, right? It's uh, at that time, you know, when I, before I come here, you know, we think of the U.S. as one of the best country in the world, right? Um, I don't know what they think about it now because right. a lot of commotion going on here right now um but <laughs> yeah but the brand is like you know this is this is the place to be and then um and then art center was the the school to be and uh but the thing is you know my english wasn't good enough uh you have to pass a, a certain uh, score they call it the total score okay uh and then art center was uh quite high what what they're asking and then um uh, and then you also need to have a portfolio to, to get in. And I did not know how to use computer at that time. So I did not know how to use computer. I didn't speak the language. So I ended up in, but I did enter, end, ended up uh, enrolling in uh, night class to put a book together. And then from there, you know, uh, and then I, I was able to get in. So, uh, 
Yeah. So they have like been, a night class kind of thing yeah. you can do and then you, oh, okay. Yeah. That's very cool. And actually it's a very good way to prepare your portfolio to get into the school. Yeah, I would think um, so. And they, were, they weren't cheap though. They yeah. were an expensive yeah. school. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. then I used to think, I used to think it was like really expensive. Now I look at, it's like going to an Ivy League school it's, or maybe even more, more expensive to go going to Ivy League school. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so, um, but, but I was able to get in. So I was, I was, I guess I was lucky. And, uh, and then from there, you know, everything goes, goes very well with the, with the career and everything. And um, I graduated as a graphic and packaging design. Uh, I, I got a degree in graphic packaging and I was a, wanted to do like a packaging design. Uh, but I ended up, you know, I always try to think five years or 10 years ahead. You know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what it is in me, but I always try to think of the future. Right. Um, at that time, it was late 90s. And and I knew when the Internet came in, I knew there was I think that's the direction where everything is going to go. So I decided maybe that's the route instead of doing a packaging. Maybe I should just do something related to um, website or something. And, yeah. um and then, and then I, uh, and then I happened to uh, interview with, and th at that time, uh, the top five a web consultant company was, uh, I, I believe it was uh, Razorfish, Sapien, uh, Cyan, March first, and then another one I forgot what that was. That was like the top five at that time, and then I, and then I got I got in. I was able to apply for a job, and then got into one, one of them, which is Cyan. And I didn't even have a, a website portfolio at that time. Oh, wow. um, I just showed my packaging, but they yeah. didn't have a web designer at that time. You know, they didn't have web designers. So they said, oh, he's a good designer. He can just figure out how to build a website later on. And, <laughs> and then they hire me. Um, but that was like during the dot-com era, I think late 90s. Yeah. And, and then, of course, as you know, the, the dot-com bus, yes. uh, the company you know, went out of business and then, and then from there, I took another, uh, another dot com company, a startup, and then that also went out of business. Uh, and then I ended up, you know, freelancing for two years. And then after freelancing for two years, I got a job at Yahoo. Uh, I was an art director there at Yahoo for, uh, I believe three and a half years. And wow. then, and then Yahoo went out of business, Yahoo search marketing. <laughs> it was, I should have gone, I should have, See, I, I love LA so much that yeah. I did not want to go for Google at that time. Oh, okay, you know? yeah. It's like, because that time Google was newer, you know? Right. But I was like so comfortable living in LA and living the LA life um, um, that I decided to just, you know, stay with, stay in LA. And then yeah, but Yahoo went out of business. And then I ended up going back to freelance again. And then, and then after that, I, I got that job from Gen X. I don't know if you know Gen X. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and then I got a job from Gen X as a freelancer. And then from Gen X, I went to o o Grady Mayers, I believe. And then, and then from there, you know, a big company, Meredith, mm -hmm. bought yeah. all of this small little company and combined them into one. And then, um, and then I, I was with Mer uh, freelancing for Meredith for a while. Um, and then. What were they doing then, with Meredith? Did it have anything to do with the magazines that they were publishing at the time? Or was it a totally separate no. kind of thing from the magazines? No, that was totally separate. They wanted to have an uh, interactive company. Okay. So that's why they bought all this small little agency and then made it into one. One kind of pretty big. Uh, were they I'm, still uh, in separate pretty, offices yeah. all over or were they, did they, no, they combined them? Big... Yeah. They combined them all together and into a uh, in an office in Culver city. Right. And then, and then from there, Accenture bought them. Okay. You know, Accenture, uh, basically, actually, sorry, basically Meredith flip us, you know, they buy a business and they flip, oh, yeah. flip the business, you know? So they flipped the business for a profit. So they bought all this little agency and, uh, and then they sell it to a bigger agency, uh, Accenture. Um, and then from there, you know, it's Accenture now, Accenture Interactive. And that's where I met you, right? Was that the building where I met no, you guys? No, I think I met you 
Oh yeah, maybe. Maybe it was already Accenture. I think you were Meredith at the, still. I think you were Meredith before it switched. I think it was like right before it switched to Accenture. I think. I'm not positive though. Uh, yeah, maybe. That's the one how you have like a, a cafeteria. Yeah, That's we the, always have the cafeteria though. Yeah, that good sushi. Oh yeah, the sushi, yeah. It's yeah. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Philip took me to lunch like after that meeting and I had the sushi. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, that was good sushi. Yeah, so yeah that was nice. I, I saw, I, I've heard, I listened to some of your interview with, uh, with obviously I listened to Philip one. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. That one went um, all over the place. <laughs> oh, it did? I mean, we started, we went all, I mean, we ended up talking about motorcycle racing. We talked about Marilyn Monroe. We, I mean, it was yeah. kind of everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's kind of nice, right? You keep it more casual. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And then um, you know, I've been I've been with them basically the same company for like almost nine years. Uh, and before they actually um, let me go, actually. <laughs> oh yeah, during the COVID. So, so I get, no, it wasn't during the COVID. It was right before the COVID. Oh wow. So uh, so a lot happening that year, you know. Um, it was funny, you know, you were asking me a question, what's the strangest thing yeah. that was part of your question you were going to ask me. I think the strangest thing is that moment where they've given me a project that was meant, I feel like that's the project that was meant for me from all the project of my entire career of 25 years. Wow. This is the project that I was born to do because it's related to uh, hospitality, which is which is that's a bis the new business that I actually try to uh, expand here in upstate. It was related to hospitality business. I bought that big house. It's not for me, by the way. It is for, uh, I'm, I'm going to convert it into a business. Okay. Um, so, so the client was um, LSW, it was leading hotels of the world. Um, so it has all the ingredients that I love about our projects, right? It, it's related to hospitality. It's related to traveling. It's related to all this beautiful photography from all over the world, you know? And, uh, and it, it's, it's very elegant. And it, it has everything that I, I want to work for. That was like the dream project for me. And I, but at the same time, I think I got let go because the client wasn't too happy with with what I've done or something like that. You know, that was part of the reason, you know? Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that is the strangest thing for me. And then, um, but at the same time, maybe because at the same time, it's also about when you try to do something different, it can backfire you. Yeah. You know, when you try to do something that you really believe that it is, it is going to be good. And when, 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 you, when you believe that um, you can put your heart and soul in it, but it doesn't really mean that uh, someone can accept it right away. Well, I think it you depends know, on the client. Might, and a lot of times it's hard to convince those clients that this is a good way to go and this is going to be a great thing for them because they're so stuck in doing things the way they yeah. used to do them. And I think when you take a chance like that, sometimes you get a client who loves it and knows that this is great. And then other times you're just yeah. like, this isn't us. This isn't what we do. And then you, mm -hmm. they ended up not liking it or firing yeah. you or however. So, yeah. Or maybe, maybe, um, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely that. And then, um, but at the same time, um, yeah, that was, that was a very a weird time, you know? Um, so so that happened and then COVID hits right after that <laughs> no it was like wait that happened and then um and I said you know I'm just gonna take a break I'm just gonna take a break uh I think that happened around October I'm just gonna take a break and uh go to upstate that's why you see all my trip mm -hmm. going upstate and then you did you move to upstate um so I went to uh, New York oh well I went to New York first of all because uh, uh, a company in New York wanted to talk to me. That's why um, in New York City, that's why I went there. 
And then while I was there, I ended up visiting my friends who's in upstate New York and then discovered this whole world outside New York City. Uh, I was like, oh my God, you know? And then I saw this beautiful mansion and uh, Italian, you know, turn of the century mansion, you get it for nothing, you know? And, and I, I love property. So I also started uh, as a side hustle. I started a, co a property company. Yeah, I was going to ask you about it. I saw on LinkedIn, you had a thing called DSpace and then you have something called yeah. Days. So it sounds like you're into all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, so the, the DSpace is a company that, uh, it's a property company that I started when I start making when I, I, when I, when I, uh, I love, I love prop, uh, I love buying properties. For some reason, I love buying those kind of uh, fixer upper that yeah. I, I can see has a potential. But instead of flipping it, I like to keep them. You know, it's almost like buying an antique. You know, right. uh, <laughs> so I don't want to sell it. You know, I just think, oh, I got it for a good deal, so I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna restore it. And then I'm gonna rent it out so they can, so whoever rent it, they're, they're the one who's paying the, the uh, mortgage, whatever. Right. So I did that and then I, I have my, uh, I think I went to Arizona, Scottsdale, Arizona, and then I saw another beautiful uh, old uh, 70s uh, 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 house. And then I ended up getting that one too. And then, and then it sort of have this pattern, you know, there's a certain, quality of a property that I like, you know, and, and because of that, I feel like maybe I can create a brand within that and then just have and create a, a you know, like a side hustle thing yeah. and see how, how that goes. And then it, it turned out that it went very well because I, I ended up using the houses for Airbnb and oh, then, nice. um, and then it was doing very well. Um, you know, I didn't know that I, I have this, you know, talent, you know, like that I, or, or a hobby that, that I like to do. Um, and, and it ended up being, uh, it ended up being making more money than my full-time job. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's great. So because of that, I was like, oh, maybe this is the future. Maybe this future can go this, this direction, you know? So, um, so anyway, so I have a, a few properties and doing Airbnb and then I got, I got laid off, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got laid off in October and I took a break for three months. And then when I come back from New York, COVID hits, I have normally my listing, I have like a 365 days of booking. It's like nonstop. Wow. Like I was doing that well, you know, yeah. and, um, wow. Because, because I love it so much because it has all this combination of, you know, you curated the place and uh, you designed the place, which is basically what I did. I use what I do with uh, designing a website and I apply it to designing a space. So That's all I did. Interior design and all that as well? No. Okay. I didn't go to any interior designs. Just say, just use that and then use your client you know when you when you when you want to do when you do a project you know you try to get to know your client mm -hmm. right so you get to know your client and what is that they do and then and then you create something your interpretation of who the client is you know right. what the brand is so for me it was about where the where the uh, the property is located Right, and then one of them is in the Hollywood Hills. Is so what is the, uh, what is it about Hollywood and Hollywood Hills? And then um, and then and then I will try to curate it based on that, you know. Okay. And then the other one will be in West Hollywood, you know. Uh, w w what is West Hollywood is about, you know? So, and then I sort of copy what's the store around in West Hollywood at that time. I don't know if you know Jonathan Adler, Kelly Wessler, mm -hmm. you know all this interior design uh, company. So I have that influence. I let the, the city influence me and then it will be an, in my interpretation of, of, of the space. So I got a lot of good review because of that, because people, yeah, people feel like I elevate the space, right? So anyway, um, so, so yeah, I was doing very, very well. So I have this fully booked and then suddenly from 300, from fully booked to zero, when the COVID hits, everybody canceled. Oh yeah. Ooh. So I got, so I lost a job 
and then I have zero and a, a potentially a negative, not, not zero because I have to pay mortgages right, on all these yeah. properties. And then I'm potentially making negative uh, income. And then on top of that, I also own a hair salon in Irvine and that also has to be shut down. Oh. Uh, so I have three different incomes that were all shut down basically. Wow. So, so that was the beginning of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it hit you hard, didn't it? Man. Yeah. So I was making negative uh, income. How's the, so is the hair salon open now? Yeah, it is open now. It, it is doing okay now. Are you at least so, making like, the rent and all the, your yeah, mortgage payments? But the, good thing, but, but the good thing about me, you know, I know um, I'm very good with number. You know, I, I'm very good. I'm very good with number and I'm all, also very good thinking about the future. So when I started advertising, uh, or, or interactive design, in, uh, I knew it's a very ageist um, career. Right. I said that to myself. Okay. Um, so make as much as you can. When you hit a certain age, no one's going to hire you. I said yeah. that to myself. And then uh, because of that, you know, while I was doing well, I, I just save and save and save because I know one of these days is going to hit me. And then I was right. You know, um, there's a pattern, you know, at work, you know, uh, I think, I think it's not just advertising. I think, you know, ageism, ageism is real for me. Oh, yeah. I, I think it is, it is a real thing, you know, um, especially in advertising, because mm -hmm. I see a pattern, you know, when someone become a creative director and once they hit a certain age, they're gone. Yeah. I don't know if they either quit or they got fired. Um, so I, I already put a cushion that we prepare when that happened. That's so smart. when, the, yeah, so when that happened, you know, I was making negative like the beginning of this year. And then I, and then, you know, I, and I decided, you know what, uh, Robbie, maybe this is a, a, a time, uh, this is a turning point in your life. You should just do what, whatever that you, you always afraid of. You know, I, all, all this time, I, you, all, you always take all this job. You always take all these big companies because, right. I, you know, they pay you well. You know, you, you have a good benefits, you know, and they give you stock option. They give you 401k, you know, this, it's something comfortable. Um, but I think I'm at that point in my life, you know, I think I'm, I've established pretty solid foundation that I can say to myself, uh, maybe you should just do whatever it is that you want. And you don't have to follow, you don't have to follow where the money goes. Right. You don't have kids anyway. It's just you. It's just you feeding yourself. You know, you can just eat a baguette. You know, you can just make a baguette every day and just, you know, it's, you, you'll be fine, you know? Yeah. So, I, and I asked myself, you know, um, if you can do anything you want right now, what would that be? You know, just money is not an issue. Right. And, um, and I said, oh, I want to have my, my a boutique hotel. I want to own a boutique hotel. I want to own a, a design company. Uh, and I want to design stuff for my hotel. And I want to design stuff for, um, for, or maybe I can have one client just to bring the, the money come in. And, um, and then I said, well, if that's, that's what, what you want, you should just do it. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, um, but do it cheaply, do it inexpensively. Right. So, because I know when you start something, you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. So when I came to, when I came to upstate, the, the living expense is so cheap here that I can, I can say, you know, I can do all these things that I wanted to do. Right. Yeah. So um, you can have a hotel here if you want, I said. And, and I'm going to do, do it, you know, and then you can have a design agency. You can make a California income. Right. But spending like, you know, upstate New York, you know, expenses, you know, and, um, and, and so far so good. So far it's been working. Well, that's great. And um, I think right now is, well, you take advantage of the situation, right? You should always uh, look at the silver lining. I think, I think you should always look at every setback there's always a silver lining on every setback, right? Right. There's always something positive about all the setbacks that you have. 
and uh, and then I try to find out what it is, and then and stick with that, you know, like uh, find that silver lining, and uh, um, and so far it's been it's been great, and I can't wait, you know. Right now, I think I'm just gonna keep doing this, you know. So I'm just gonna try to get clients, uh, maybe in California, in LA. Oh, just like what you're doing, basically, right? Yeah. You've been doing it all all your life, like for the last twenty years. Yeah, is it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been the same kind of deal. You just kind of reach out to people wherever you think you fit in or you can help, no matter what coast is on. And so I don't mind, especially on you doing the design. I think it's even better because I have to physically go to those places to do the work most of the time. But doing the design, I think, especially with the way people are working now, you don't have to be there. You can do it the way you do it. Except when I need a photographer because the one the client sent me picture oh we're just gonna take the picture at the office and send That's it to true. you <laughs> and then i was like uh you know it's i wish i'm there i wish i'm there and just take the pictures while i'm there you know right well you never know maybe maybe we can work together um you know one of these projects uh, yeah. if, you, if you go to california so i don't have to be there um i think a lot of your work it's very um uh relatable that's what i like about it you know, Thank you. Um, I can use you for Nestle uh, or I can use you for, you know, a tech company in Bay right. Area, you know. So everything is it's, it's, it's very approachable and uh, versatile. That's the word I'm looking at. So, um, yeah, you just you know, maybe you never know. Um, yeah, I mean, like I've told people before, I've had jobs where I met a person and we talked and we're like, maybe we'll get to work together sometime in the future. Hopefully we do kind of a thing. And it will literally be five years or more before that right, right project pops up, Yeah, you know, and we get to work together and then it turns out great and it was all worth, you know, the wait, but you know, there are times where you just go, especially if you're first starting in this shit, all right, it's been a yeah. year, it's been two years and we haven't worked together. I'm never going to work with them. And I was literally sitting down, the one I'm thinking about, I was sitting down for dinner on a Friday night with my wife at this restaurant, get a call on my phone and mm-hmm. the client says, can you be here Monday morning? Oh, wow. have a shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know what? Yeah, I can be there Monday. Luckily, I think it was Saturday. He was like, you know what? We pushed it to Wednesday. We're going to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday instead of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I said, okay, that works even better. And then flew out to LA and then, you know, shot for three days. But it was, five or six years in the making for that, you know, to get to that point. Wow. So wow. I always figure, you know, is if it works out, it works out. If it's meant to be and it's something yeah. that I'm good for, it'll happen at some point down the road. Yeah. Sometimes it's all about hitting, hitting them up. Yeah. yeah. You know, do you need me and stuff like that? Um, even the one who thinks you're sucks, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> talking about, um, talking about that, you know, I give you a really good example. So at Gen X, you know, the job that I have for nine years, right. Yeah. Gen X Meredith's, um, MXM, uh, Accenture, you know, for, I, how, do you know how I started? So I went on an interview and the creative director looked at my work and then he said, uh, he said, your work is not good. He said that right in front of my face. Your work is not good, but I think you're a good designer, but, uh, but your interactive is not good. That's what he said. All right. But guess what? He ended up hiring me anyway. <laughs> and lasted a job for two weeks lasted me nine years wow so how permalens permalens yeah. um, how does that work when he tells you your work is not good but yeah we're gonna hire you what i mean well, how's, i think um what are the emotions going through your head at that point well i learned something having pride it can be overrated um, so, so you have to play the politics and then said, Robbie, just take it down. Right. You're here to get the job. And then after he said, my work is not good. He showed me his work, you know, <laughs> he showed me his work. And then, um, I, and I should, you look at him he, and go, I should, uh, your work's not very good. And then, and then he showed me his, his interactive work. And then I was like, well, they, they were good. And then I was like, wow, you know, uh, that's, that's amazing. You know, and I, that's all I did. I, I just yeah. say how great he is. 
So after someone told you how sucked you are, you oh, yeah. tell them and you, they show them the work. And it's like, wow, you are amazing. You know, yep. that's all I did. And then I got the call and lasted me nine years. I told somebody that the other day, we were talking about a producer or a creative director, somebody, I can't remember who the person was we were talking about, but we were talking about how their personality is one where they like to be complimented and they like to be yeah. in charge or let people know they're in charge. So I was telling this person, if you want them to hire you, all you have to do is talk about how great you think they are and what a great leader they are and that you, whatever, you know, basically you found the thing in them that, you know, if you hit it right and tell them yeah. how good they are at being a producer or leading or being the boss, you're going to probably get hired. Yeah. And it's, yeah. I think it's true with a lot of people. If you can find that thing that you know is their button and you go at it like you did there. Exactly. It's still so good, then yeah. So, yeah, it. sometimes a lot of times you have to be a people person. That's another talent that you have. You know, it's not just being talented photographer or talented art director, but yes. you also have to be good with people, especially with clients, you know, because we are in the business of, you know. That's what I've uh, never understood about. I have some photographer friends and I've heard th them tell me or I've heard from the client say that I ended up running into later that this photographer, that photographer will tell the client, no, that they don't, they can't be shot that way or they don't want to shoot that way or whatever. And they don't, they end up not being used again by that client. And I try and tell, especially like my assistants who are starting out, you know, once mm -hmm. you're there for the client, you have your ideas, but if the client wants it shot this way, you shoot it that way. And then you can always say, Hey, what if we try shooting it the way you yeah. want to shoot it? And if you have time, great, but they're not hiring. They're hiring you for your perspective, but at the same time, a lot of times they have a certain way it needs to be shot or they think it needs to be shot. Yeah. And you have to do that. You can't argue with your client. And yeah, that's back. true. Maybe that's why that's the last job I had because you know, <laughs> I was so passionate about the project. I really believe in it. It has to be done this way um, or something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, you know, that was part, part of it, you know? Um, no, I think it's, it could be like we said earlier is so it's good, but in a way that's different from what they're used to or what they think. It's like yeah. you hear people, was it what that Ford said? If I had asked the public what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse instead mm -hmm. of a car. They wouldn't have said, yeah. I want something with an engine that can take me someplace. They would have just said, I want a faster horse. And yeah. I think a lot of times clients can be that way. They have done something for so long and had it in such a certain way yeah. for so long that they want the faster horse and don't realize that you're building the car and that yeah. if they would let you go with the car, they would do so much better. I exactly. Just, yeah. You know, it just depends on the client sometimes. Yeah, it's true. Uh, that, talking about clients, uh, um, I think I'm actually fairly new about um, dealing with clients yeah. because, you know, I'm so comfortable, you know, working my entire life, right? I always have a project manager. Right. And then I have, uh, you know, I have a creative director. You know, I was a senior art director. Um, so I will have a creative director that will be the person who talk to the clients and stuff like that. But now, you know, I'm on my own. I have to do everything myself. Uh, I have to be a project manager. I have to be the person who write SOW. That was very new to me. Um, so, um, and then, uh, and then also I have to dealing with clients and also how you deal with, with your team, you right. know, how you work with your team. And, and then I have to make this presentation uh, with the clients. Um, which I'm not used to it, um, yeah. but but I get better as you know, as we How have more and more meetings. That? How are you going about finding new clients and getting them work? Oh, just hitting everybody and yeah. just hitting everyone, and then and then this hap this person happened. Uh, a friend of mine who just got a job, who's in the marketing. Uh, he was in the marketing person for this uh, startup company in Bay Area, uh, who needed a redesign of a website um well i can i can probably talk to you more when when they launch it because a lot of things i am not supposed to share the right. uh the signing all this nda mm -hmm. um yeah i got i found it from him and then 
but then I have to go against an agency. Right. So that's how I started my design company because if I come as a freelancer, it's not as good as yeah. if you're coming in as an agency. So I was, I was going against an, uh, another agency. Um, so it's me. So I have to rush about making uh, my company. You know, uh, I did not even have time to come up with the name. I just come up, oh, I'm just going to use my last name, Jen Journal Design. I think that's, I'm, I'm thinking about changing it. I'm thinking about rebranding everything. Um, so I did that really fairly quickly. And then I coming in as a, as a design company and, uh, and, and then I pitched to the CEO um, and my friend told me, oh my God, Robbie, you were nervous when you met, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, because I've never actually meet the clients. Usually right. someone else is doing it for me. And when I was in Accenture, like, you know, we have a project manager, we have a creative director or ECD, not even creative director, ECD. Right. Um, like higher up uh, from creative director. And, uh, and then I don't know what happened and I, I got the job, you know, and, and all I did basically, I, uh, I, well, I've obviously I give them, them good value, right? It yeah. is a good value. And then I told them about my background and I also mentioned, you know, if you go to Accenture, imagine how much you're going to pay. You know? <laughs> so, um, but maybe that's part of it, or I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I think that would work. Maybe, I used to work for Accenture. I'm probably the person who would have worked on this project of yours yeah. anyway. So why pay them this much money when you can pay me this much to get the exact yeah. same work? Exactly. That's actually exactly what I, I told uh, some, some part of it. Yeah. Right. So I, anyway, I got the job and uh, it's been fun. And um, hopefully I will be able to keep doing this. And uh, I have another company in New York City. It's a pharma company that I might be able to tackle on. But the thing is, I want this project to go very smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, that I don't want to add another um, project into. Uh, the thing is, you know, I came up with the list. What is it that people hate about working for a boutique company? You know, right. one of them is, you know, when when the work is a lot. Um, you work like crazy and then suddenly you don't have work, right? It's yes. a certain part. So I don't want to, I don't want to do that right now. And, and I just want to build a good relationship with the, my team member right now. So, uh, and then I have a lot, a lot to learn, right. you know? And um, so I'm just going to play, playing it a little safer instead of making a lot more money. I'm just going to making it, make this go very uh, smoothly you know, yeah. as my very first project. And once I feel very comfortable that we've done most of the work, then I can take, off, take along uh, another project. Um, but right now on my team are, they're all freelancers, right? you know, but they're top freelancers because there are the freelancers that Accenture oh, sure. yeah, hired before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. So, no, um, but so a lot of things, you know, the, the whole, I, I guess the whole pandemic, you know, did, did good to me. And um, but now I have to think about what happened when the pandemic is over. That's oh, yeah. my next thing, right? So this is going to be over, right? Um, you know, do people don't want you to work remotely anymore? Or do you have to go to an office again? But you've been doing this uh, pretty yeah. much all your career, right? Yeah. So. I mean, so from what I've heard from, do that. from people who are at bigger agencies, say in New York, a lot of them think that they're never going to go back to being in the office five days a week again, that yeah. they'll go into the office when they need to have a team meeting or something, or when they need to be spitballing ideas and doing things like that. And they'll just block out time in a conference room and, but they won't ever go back to having the full time, everybody's at the agency yeah. at the exact same time again. You know, yeah. So I could see that for sure happening. Yeah. At least they, they will be a lot more open when you said, oh, I'm just going to work in remotely. They will, they will, you know, it's a lot more acceptable now. Although I could see so, yeah, it being a goal. lot harder for photographers uh, to get meetings. Oh, <laughs> it happens. It's already difficult. It's way more difficult now than it used to be. Like when I first started before I see. everybody had a website, art producers would, would see you because there was no other way to really meet photographers. So they were more interested in seeing you. Now it's more difficult to get a meeting because they're so accessible by every photographer. 
um, with email and websites and all that. So now they kind of make it more difficult to see, get in to see a producer. And now I can see that if you're not actually at the space, at the office for the agency, getting in to meet with somebody is going to be way more difficult than it, than it was even a year ago, I would think. Mm, but I see. But, you know, something like for me, for instance, you know, I, I'm, I'm not used to the, the whole, sometimes, you know, I'm not used to the whole, you know, uh, virtual meeting thing. And then sometimes I wanted to go to California right now to meet the client. I think I yeah. should at least go visit them uh, at least once, you know, um, or maybe, you know, when I said, you know, I need a photographer instead of me going there, maybe I can just send it you, someone like you is just, you know, happened to be in California. Um, yeah. And a lot of so now, maybe, like you can do the, like, say if you need a photographer in California, you can do a remote cause you can even do like with the share of the screen, the breakout rooms on zoom, it's one of those mm. things where we can be shooting and we can just share the screen for mm. capture one and you can see everything that's popping in. So everything we're shooting, you can see and you can communicate with us. So you can stop us and go, Hey, that right there needs to change. Can we move it over here? Oh, or whatever, okay. That kind of thing. So it's almost one of those things where you don't actually have to be there. Oh, it's okay. not the same experience and it's not, you don't get to see, I mean, we can show you stuff ahead of time. Like, here's the hair and makeup that's going on. You know, we're here to close. So yeah. you can see all that ahead of time and make your decisions. And then we start shooting and show you what we're shooting as it's coming up on the screen because we're sharing the screen with you so you can see it. But it's not the same as actually being there, and it never will be. But mm -hmm. it does give you that ability to not get on a plane during all this COVID stuff and fly to L.A., and be there for that shoot, you know, when you would rather be at home and not take the risk of getting onto the plane or it's a half yeah. day shoot and you're like, there's no point in me really flying out there for a half day mm -hmm. or for a few hours just for this shoot where I know I have this photographer and team that I trust and I can watch it pop up on my screen at home and be there. Yeah. You know, I guess the only thing is you don't have the client right beside you, which could be good. You know, maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. Have the client, they're <laughs> yeah. whispering in your ear trying to yeah. tell you what they want to change. But I'm sure they can always text you or call you, you know, at the same yeah. time. But yeah, I mean, you could do it however you need to do it. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, good it'd probably know. be yeah. good to go see the client once. <laughs> right. So I, I feel like, yeah, um, yeah, I think I should do that. So I might be going back to L.A. Maybe either November or December, you know. Um, I saw they did a study and it, it was supposedly it's an independent study that says you have like a 0 0.003 chance of catching COVID on a plane because yeah. of the way that the, system, the air flows down and then into the filtration system and it gets filtered mm -hmm. so much. And with everybody wearing masks, it knocks it down even more on top of the filtration system. I see. The only place that's really, I guess, that you have an issue is be maybe in the airport itself, like sitting near somebody mm -hmm. before you get on the plane. Yeah. But supposedly, once you're on the plane, you have less chance of getting it than you do if you're, you know, walking around the grocery store or someplace, or having dinner. I guess if you're having dinner I see. in a restaurant. Oh, good to know. Yeah. So I felt better, especially since I'm yeah. flying to LA on Friday. I felt yeah. a lot better um, hearing that because at first, but. I have a friend who's an uh, orthopedic surgeon and I flew to uh -huh. Memphis earlier this year for a shoot. And I asked him, I was like, should I fly to Memphis or should I just drive? Because it's a 10 hour drive. I'm not really up for driving 10 hours, but I will, if you think it's you know dangerous to get on a plane that I might catch this. And he was like, no, nah. he said, you, he gave me this, he told me to get this stuff, stuff called Nosen. And you just, it's, alcohol and orange extract or something on there, but you put uh -huh. it in your nose. And I see. And it's supposedly it kills 99.99% of all virus and bacteria. And yeah. he said, use that, wear a mask. He said, you'll be golden. And he said he's been using it on his patients for um, surgeries. Oh, and he's cut maybe I should copy that, yeah. Yeah, he said staph infections have about disappeared since he started using it on, on his patients. So I feel with that. Yeah. Study I just Another saw. thing. Another another news I've I've heard that uh, if you it depends on the type of blood you have. I saw that. Um, it was like a blood type. Yeah. So if it's a blood type, uh, oh, it's a good one. Which I happen to have a blood O. 
uh, type, uh, you're less likely to get it. And you're, if you do get it, you're, you, you will recover faster than right. other type of blood. So. Yeah, I was actually talking with a client slash friend of mine when this all came up. And he's like, I wonder if it's like mosquito bites. Because we had talked about, I've just been yeah. outside. And I was like, I hate mosquitoes. They bite me. He said, so that led in, he said, it's a blood type thing with mosquitoes. Well, that led into COVID. He said, I wonder if COVID is something similar. Like you're, le- you're more likely to get it if you have this blood type or that blood type. And I have AB positive. My wife has O. So she's like, oh, I'm good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I'm AB positive. That's close, right? So maybe maybe it's the same kind of, maybe I'm in the range. I don't know. Yeah, but at the same time, we never certain if it's, if it's really oh, yeah. works or not, right? So um, just, I think, yeah, I think you should just live your life. Just be safe, you know, wear masks and, you know, your still live your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so. Yeah, I think I'm I'm due for for going back, it's, especially now. It's it's coming in as uh, uh, um, winter is coming in, right? Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to get yeah, someplace warm for a little bit. Yeah, and take off that delay. Wait, what's the difference between? So you started off as a designer, ended up as art director. Is there a big difference between designer and art director? Uh, yeah, designer is basically. Um, w- what, where I start, a designer is actually designing the, the, the design. You come up with the um, art director is basically giving you the direction, like, oh, this is a type of look that we should, we should create. Okay. Designer is the person that creates it. All right. You know, so that's the difference. And, um, and it's funny because I started it as a graphic designer. And, um, and then when I got into Art Center, uh, a lot of people in the in the graphic design department always say, "Ravi, your work is very ad, very addy." Um, so, so I took a, an ad class, and a lot of people people in ad class will think that I'm very designer. You know, my my way of thinking is very designery. So, so I was sort of like a combination of between the designers and advertising. You know, graphic design and advertising. Right. These are two different things. Well, that's um, good. Yeah, and um, but the problem about advertising, I, I wanted to switch to advertising, but the problem about advertising, um, uh, did, did we go off rail now that we're talking about something else? No, <laughs> you're fine, just, no, just keep on. Okay, um, the difference, um, the thing about advertising, uh, obviously English should, should be your first language, Yeah, you know? So that was the problem when I tried to switch to advertising. And then the head of uh, Art Center at that time, the head of advertising guy, and asked me, Robbie, when he was, he has doubts, you know, he has right. doubts when I said, I want to switch to advertising. So he, he, I knew that he, he, he has doubts. And then he's like, Robbie, when you, when you dream, do you dream in Indonesian or do you dream in English? And then I was like, well, it really depends on the dream, I said. If I talk to my parents, I will be speaking Indonesian, but if I'm in a dream in a bad classroom, I will, I will dream in English. Oh, you wow. know, that's that's, that's what, I, what, I, what I said. And, and when I talk to you, I said, you know, I will, I will be speaking in English. So, um, and then also another problem at that time, because uh, a lot of advertising is based on a cultural reference. Yeah. When you didn't, when you did not grow up here, you didn't grow up here. Um, grow up here. Um, there's a lot of things that you don't know. Like, so the type of advertising that you can do is very specific, you know. And then I really rely on visual, not so much with word. So whatever whatever idea that you try to express, I will create an image that requires no words for you to understand it. Or maybe just one word right. for you to get it, what I'm trying to say. Um, and which is, you know, might not be a popular thing because, you know, advertising is all about, you know, talking and, uh, you know, using, uh, I don't know, you know, um, there's a lot of things I didn't know, but then, but then, you know, that at, Got milk came out. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, so you just say got milk, and then you get it, you know. Right. And um, 
So that's when I, I was like, oh, you know, I can, I can still do a couple of ads like that. You know, that's like great. You know, that's like one of my favorite ads. So one, one of them was like, you know, they have this uh, peanut butter sandwich has been, you know, someone eaten it, a, a, a little bit of it, of it. Yeah. A, a bite out of it. And then it says got milk. You know, and you get it right away, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it's like, oh, you know, I can, I can, I can do advertising, I said. Uh, but, but I still ended up not choosing advertising. I ended up just finishing uh, graphic, graphic design, graphic packaging design. But then I ended up doing interactive, which is later on interactive. Become, it's like, I feel like advertising, uh, a traditional advertising is almost like a dying art form that is evolving into uh, interactive. Oh, yeah design, interactive, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh my God, I forgot all the word. Uh, but anyway, you, you, you get what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah, I understand. So it's, in a way, you know, at the end it works out. Everything works out for me, even though I have all these doubts, you know. Um, uh, let's say, you know, I shouldn't be doing this because, you know, because, you know, I'm kind of handicapped, right? When you didn't grow up. When you didn't grow up here, uh, you you're a little handicapped when you when you try to do advertising here. Well, I and, think twenty uh, years being here though is kind of you probably got the hang of it by this point. Yeah, by this point, but I think uh, but at the same time, I'm getting older, right? I cannot start working on that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the bad part, I guess, about the whole thing is you're getting older, and that's I think the best part and it seems like you're good at it is adapting to yeah. what's changing and change with it and adapt to the new things that are that are coming around where a lot of people they want to stay stuck yeah. and they want to fight it and i've seen that a lot especially when things went to digital or social media is becoming such a big thing now mm -hmm. i hear people constantly going yeah well it used to be this way and it, that's the way it should be i don't understand why they're doing it this way so it doesn't matter this is yeah. the way it's rolling. This is the way it's going to go. And if you s keep fighting it, yeah. you're going to be going the same way with it. You're going to disappear. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to change and adapt and whatever it is, but it sounds like you're doing a good job of it. Yeah. I think change is definitely um, something that, um, that I actually, I was always afraid of, you yeah. know, and, um, and then, and then, you know, after, after, you know, what happened, actually the whole pandemic is sort of like influenced me greatly. Like, you know, it's like, just forget about everything, you know, just do what, what the hell you want to do, you know, and just uh, do something. No, this is what I did. I said to myself, do everything differently than what you used to. Yeah. Like whatever it is that you used to do, just change it. Um, a tough thing to do. I don't yeah. think, because I'm kind of with you. I'm, I'm, very slow to change like the last house I, i've been in my, this house now for three three years i think it'll be uh -huh. three years yeah just now three years as of like a month or two ago the last house i was in i bought it said i was going to be in it no more than three to five years because i didn't really like it but we were basically going to go in update it uh -huh. and get out ended up having kids stayed in there for 17 years wow and moved because basically I was like, I don't know that I can afford to move into what I want. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't know that I want to do this, you know, whatever. And once I got here, it's like, God, I should have done this 15 years ago, you know, 12 yeah. years ago, whatever it was. And I wish I had done it more. So I think to do something like you're talking about, like just flip the way you do things, it's a difficult yeah. thing to do, but it can be a, a great thing at the same time. Yeah. And at the same time, there are things you know, like these voices in your head that was telling you, oh, you, you should do this, but you, do, you wouldn't listen to it until somebody else is doing it. Yeah. And there's like, oh, and then became successful doing what, what you always have in the back of your head. So, um, so that happens a lot throughout my life, right? So you, you always have all these ideas and then you ended up not doing it. So that's why I said right now, just whatever that voice telling you, just go for it, you know? <laughs> that's good so you have a website and all that set up now yeah i do but it's not great but uh but but it's there yeah <laughs> <laughs> Cendrona design and then i try to um so i try to uh, i think i'm gonna uh fix it again after after this project is done and i'm gonna try to latch on to another uh, another client that's when i need to right so is uh, it is the website 
one of those where it's good, but you don't think it's good enough kind of a thing. And you want to just keep, cause I know there's like times I'll shoot stuff. Like it's not that great. I should have done this. Or I should have done that. I want to do this. And somebody else will look at it and go, Oh, I think that's a great image. But so as a designer, I'm just wondering if maybe you have this, your site's actually good, but you're looking at it going, mm, I would change this. I would change that. I'd like to do this or do that. So you're saying it's okay. Uh, I think it has something to do with what my next client is going to be. And yeah. uh, I want to position myself in a certain, I love doing branding. You know, that's w one of the things that I love doing. Uh, that's why, you know, I, I got this uh, startup company. It's always good because they're very open about, oh, you can do whatever you want, oh, you yeah. know, whatever direction. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I just wasn't sure. I just basically put it up there for, for this meeting, actually. I just throw everything together and just, for me to present it to the client, you know, I've, I've done this, this project, this project, this project, right. but I think I want to be a little more uh, strategic, I think for yeah. my next client to get it and um, to uh, be, a little, be a little more prepared or um, that's an another thing is, you know, the, my team, right? Why, why would anyone want to work for you? Like <laughs> you just started it. <laughs> Who are you? You know, I would rather work for Accenture or, uh, you know, Google or Microsoft, yeah. why do I have to work for you? You know? So the only way for me to offer right now is I have a very interesting project, right? right? We're talking about the uh, auto software company for automobile. We're talking about Tesla like right. company, like a right. Tesla, like the company who ever want to work with them is right. going to be like competing against Tesla. You know, like when, when I told you all these things, you know, they, Everyone is like get excited about it, oh, right? Sure. Yeah. So it's 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 the type of maybe I should find the the interesting client first, you know, to prioritize that. And so so that's how I get uh, to work with a lot of good talents who want to work for me, you know. Yeah, that would so. make sense. I said the house you bought. You said you just you're not you didn't buy it to live in. Are you buying it to be your agency? Or are you buying it for a B and B? Catherine yeah, or? I was thinking, um, see, the, the idea of doing Airbnb, actually, I wanted for my retirement, I wanted to start my own uh, hotel, like a small little boutique hotel. Right. And I have a land in Bali, in Indonesia, in Bali. Oh, wow. uh, so I was, I had this fantasy, you know. Um, and, um, but now, actually, Bali is 10 times or maybe 20 times more expensive than upstate New York. And <laughs> it turned out that I don't have to move to another country. I can just do it right here. Yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, and the thing is, if you want to do something new that you're not, uh, you have no experience, start small. Right. And then make it into a prototype and make it into a prototype. Let's say if it fail, then it's okay. You don't yeah. spend that kind of money, you know? And then I can do it myself, right? Because I don't need the, uh, finding an investor or anything, you know? Uh, so that's, that's what I want to do. I want to create a, a new kind of hospitality post COVID. Uh, my idea changed after this whole COVID thing. Um, it used to be, you know, it's all about the design, how you curated the place. Uh, but, but now it's on top of all of that in how you, you create the environment that people feel really safe to coming in and, uh, but at the same time, also a reflection of the neighborhood. Uh, so you have to really know about your neighborhood before you even start anything. So this is the research part that I've done. And I've been living here for, for three months and I've done a lot of research. I meet a lot of people and the people here are very open about helping you. They, 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 oh, they get very great. exciting. Like when I said, you know, I'm from LA, you know, I want to start this. You know, I went to the S SPC, I think it's, it's uh, uh, is, it, is, is this place that helped small business to start? They, you know, they, they were very happy, you know, me coming in, they, they help, yeah, we can help you if you wanna, you know, start all these, you know, businesses. It's, it's, it's been great. So I think that's one thing that, you know, we, we always think of New York City, right? We try to make it there, right, but it's yeah. actually, you know, you can be the big fish in a small pond and then you can make a big difference to that community. I think, right. I think I'm like, go beyond making money at this point of my life. It's about how you, you know, you, when, you, when you have a lot of talent, what, what is it that you can give to other people? What is that you can give it back? Right? So I'm right. at that point in my life that I think it's about time for me to 
contribute and giving giving it back. Wow, so that's a um, great thing. so uh, so I met, you know, learned about the CD. This is a Rust Belt. They, they call it what Rust Belt CD. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there are a lot of couple of sketchy part of the um, of the CD, but uh, but they have this. They're building this uh, half a billion dollar hospital right now, oh, wow. and then they have this one billion dollar uh, company. I think it's called Cree. Uh, it's C-R-E-E. Um, I think it's based from North Carolina or South, oh, really? South Carolina. Yeah, it's a big, big company who's, who's injecting like a billion dollar uh, uh, project into, oh, wow. the, into the city. So I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm coming in. I have this feeling that I get here at the right time. Because yeah. if I come here five years from now, it will be too, I won't be able to afford that, you know, yeah. that, that big house, right? So, um, so that's that's what I've been doing. So I've been doing a lot of research, and I also went to the I went to the historical society. They have this uh, this um, uh, organization, the historical society for Oneida County. Oneida County is a part of a uh, county in New, upstate New York, um, and they. Uh, so I learned a lot about the city. I learned a lot about my house. It turned out it used to be a, a preparatory school. Oh yeah, back back in, really? back then, yeah. And then, um, yeah, it was used to be a preparatory school, and then, and then someone very wealthy actually owns the house. Someone very wealthy owns the house who collect all these arts, and then donated the the one of the piece into the museum. And museum, it's only a block away from the Manson Williams Proctor's Arts Museum. Oh, wow. who designed by the Philip Johnson, which is a very famous architect. Yeah. Uh, so my house is just only a block away. And then, you know, I won't tell you how much I get it, but it's basically for nothing. Um, so I have a lot of uh, optimism about what I can do with the city. Um, yeah, sounds like you hit a good time. And then, um, you know, I've been, you know, buying a lot of book, you know, I have this book, it's called uh, Utica, A City Worth Savings. Oh. Um, this is this this guy. Uh, I think he's 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 an older guy. Uh, he wrote this book in the seventies, you know, okay. and then uh, and then I, I bought a bunch of it. You know, I want to put it in the house, and then and then also learn about other things too. You know, it's not just it's not just Utica, but it's also about um, how how people live here. You know, you know the, the different lifestyle here and um, the food. There's a big Italian community here, um, and then. Um, and also a lot of uh, um, people from uh, uh, refugee, ref refugee from another um, country like uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, or um, Bosnia. Oh wow! You know, a lot of these refugee actually they 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 put put them here. You know, so there's actually a lot of culture. Like it's a very multicultural. You know. Oh, yeah, I would and, not uh, have thought that. Yeah. Yeah. But when you come to my place, when it's all done, you will yes. feel that way. <laughs> good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll come check <laughs> it out. Even, and then I have this, you know, it's, you know, I bought this book, A Taste of Utica, with all the food that they have here. Oh, wow. You know, so, yeah. um, it, but this uh You're this definitely lady, doing your research. Um, yeah, and then... Um, and then I bought a bunch of books, anything about, about Utica, you know, it used to be a very wealthy, uh, wealthy town, uh, wealthy city. Um, um, and then they even have Monopoly, city of Utica. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I had no idea. <laughs> I'm guessing that's a limited edition Monopoly. Yeah, oh, and this Monopoly, they, um, all, all the money goes to, uh, uh, this organization, um, you know, um, I forgot the term for it. You know, it's like you taking care of a person who's who's sick, oh, okay, uh, and who's dying. I, I don't know what the term for that. Hospice. Uh, it's or something called like Abraham that? House. Was that hospice? Like yeah. Hospice? Hosp yeah. Okay. Yeah, hospice. Yeah, that's the term I was looking for. Um, so it's uh, you know um, contribute to that. It's called Abraham House. You know, so all the proceeds goes there. Oh, that's cool. And, um, so yeah, I think I think it's it's an exciting time, and I think um, 
you know, I get to do what, what I've been doing all these times, which is interactive. And I'm, but at the same time, I, I think what I want to expand that. And then I, I, at the same time, I want to have all these businesses to connect to, with each other. You know, yeah. I will, I will hire my design company to do my hospitality business. You right. Know? And then uh, vice versa, you know? So I think the idea is to, to make it, make everything work together. That's smart. Man, yeah. I hear you. You're going to be a hardcore businessman when you already <laughs> are. So that's probably... Well, I try. Uh, but uh, I think the key is just do the things that you love. Yeah. And once you do that, you can, you know, uh, this become like a vacation. You know, it's not right. really a job. You know, it's actually a vacation. That's so, uh, well, man, thank you. This has been great. Yeah. I've really enjoyed talking to you. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you. You doing this? I think we, I think we, we go over an hour. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we did. No, it's fine. I don't have a problem with it at all. It's good. Anybody watching, listening, um, be sure and thumbs up this, like it, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and um, check us out on the next one. But this has been a good one. Yeah. Thank you, Robin, very, very much. Thank you.